Good afternoon everybody and welcome to my tutorial. My name is Curtis Marshall and I'm here to teach you how to make a website in Visual Studio 2010. The first step we're going to do, open up your Visual Studio 2010. After you've opened it, go up to File, New Website. When that's finished, you'll see new website at the top. Choose which install template you'd like to use. For this tutorial we're going to use Visual Basic. Click on ASP.NET Empty Website. Make sure it's checked as file system. And create the website. Press OK. Awesome. Now we have a blank new website to use. Our next step is to go up to the Solutions Explorer on the right here. Right click where it says website or whichever yours is named and add new item. In the add new item we're going to make sure we click on web form, make sure it's default and this is my personal preference but I like to untick this checkbox here. Then press add. Now we can see in this top right hand corner it says default.aspx and here that's just loaded is a default.aspx page. So if you like make sure you click inside the div box and type in home screen. This will be the home screen when after we've done a login procedure for your website will load to this default.aspx page. Now we're going to make the login. Do exactly the same as you did before. Right click on website, add new item, new web form. We're going to change the name of this to login aspx again I'm going to make sure that's unticked and then I'm going to press add once that's done we can see the login.aspx page is up and we're ready to go go down to the bottom left click on toolbox from the toolbox we'll see our standard items we can insert into the page minimize the standard validation we're going to be using the login so if it's not open find login and open the login box from here we're going to grab a login control and drag it onto the page inside here now you can see there's a login control box Okay, now that we've put in the login control, we're going to do a validation control. So on the left hand side of the toolbox, where from you've grabbed the login control and placed it in the login ASP.x website, go to the validation and you're going to get a validation summary and place it inside the login.aspx web page. You're going to see two things come up here, error message 1 and error message 2. Now, in the Properties window, where it says Validation Summary 1, we're going to grab this scroll and scroll all the way down to the bottom, where it says Validation Group. In the Validation Group, we're going to click inside the box and type Login 1. Login 1 is this control right here. So it is saying that this Validation Summary is going to control Login 1, and login control 1 is this box here. So when we click out of that, you should see down the bottom that this still has login 1. Now we're going to test the login page to make sure it's functioning and there's no problems as of yet. So first off, we'll press the save button to save the login. We'll click on the default at 2, 
click on save right come over to the right here under solutions explorer right click and click view in browser there you have it the login control if I press login will not let me log in because I need a username and a password. If I type anything in there, it's going to load but it won't find anything because we don't have any usernames or passwords allocated. So close that browser. Okay, now we're going to customize the login view for logged in users. So we're going to grab this login view control from the toolbox, paste it in, right. Now you'll see there's different views. So anonymous template, logged in template. So the anonymous template is when a user isn't logged in. Logged in template is when the user is logged in. So when the anonymous template, we'll click in here. You can write any sort of text you like. So we're going to say, sorry. And most times when you start typing, it'll throw you out of that box. So the best thing to do is go from design view into source view. You'll see where I've just typed that bit. Go, sorry, you are not logged in. Please use login above to continue right go back to design view there you have it next click on this button right here to the side change the view from anonymous to logged in empty again so logged in view I'll just type a W go back to source view there's my W so I'll type welcome, put a comma there, space. Now, when someone presses login, we want them to see their name. So welcome, whatever the username is. So the easiest way in this toolbox, grab the login name and drag it across over to here. Then we can do a comma after that. So this control here will say welcome if you log in as user 1, it will say welcome user 1. And right after this we'll say so welcome user 1, you are now logged in. Full stop. Now we can go back to design view. With this done, we'll click there, go down to the logged in template. There you go. Welcome. Username. So that'll be your username. You are now logged in. Now you can grab the login status from the toolbox again and place wherever you like. We'll just place it at the bottom for the moment. Just drag this control down here. That bit will say the login status. So if you're not logged in, it'll have a login. If not, it'll show you are logged in and obviously you can log out. The next task we have is to create member pages so we can sign in to this login control. So what we're going to do, right click on your website and click new folder. That folder we can call members. Then inside this members page members folder sorry right click and press add new item going to be another web form I'm going to call it members click add now you can see we have a members ASPX page inside the members folder so what this basically does for us gives us a member page so then from the default page, 
we can link to the members page so when a member wants to log in so in this default page we'll type members page and we'll insert a hyperlink from the source and the hyperlink ID and in the hyperlink ID we will have navigate URL so down in this right hand corner the properties window click on the hyperlink and then find the property navigate URL and we'll enter the code in for the members.aspx page which should simply be you can type this word for word so members for the members folder forward slash members dot ASPX and then this hyperlink will then navigate the URL to members dot ASPX we can call that members look back at design view there you go so from the members page if you click there it will take you to the members page which will take you there Let's just have a look at this working. View in browser. Yes, save the changes. Click on the members. And here, the members page leads you to, but the members page is blank. Okay, so you can see the members page because the members page at the moment is not protected by any login validation or authentication. So before we do anything, we'll go to this members page. We'll have a title, members page. We'll save that. Right. The next thing to do is to create some users. So the first thing we do, go up to website down to ASP.NET Configuration. Click on ASP.NET Configuration. We'll bring you to this window. The ASP Website Administration Tool. From there, click on Security. This is where you can add users, change permissions, roles, as we can see here, etc. Before you do any of this, we have to set the authentication type. Now the sh Default is going to be Windows. We do not want that. So we'll click Select Authentication Type. Instead of from a local network, it's going to be from the internet. So click on Internet and Done. Cool. Now we can create a user. So click on Create User. Okay, this is the panel to create a user. So you have to enter username, password, confirm the password, email, a security question in case you forget the password, and the security answer. On this box here, it says roles are not enabled. So before we'll create a user, we'll create a role. So if we click back, here's the roles. And the roles will be certain members that can access certain folders in certain areas of the website. So we'll click Enable Roles. Roles are now enabled. Create or Manage Roles. So we'll have a new role name as Members. Add Role. There you have it. Role Name Members. Add Remove Users. And Delete. Okay, now from the menu, we're going to click back on security. So click there. We're going to create a user. So for this, we'll just call them member1. My password will be member1 and an exclamation mark because in Visual Studio they want another different symbol to symbolize. A small secure password. So member one, 
email will be member1 at email.com, just a mock-up. Security question, what is your username? Not a very good security question, but it's only for, whoops, number one, tutorial purposes. Then in the role section here, we're going to click on members because they are a part of the members role. Create user. Done. Completed. Now, sometimes I've seen people get errors here saying that it either can't be created or there was an error. So the best thing to do if that does happen is just close the window and reopen again and try and do the same process again. If it doesn't work, close down Visual Studio, reboot your computer, and that should fix the problem. Okay, so I'm going to close that down. Right. Now, we're going to set up the roles. So, view website ASP.NET config. Sorry, the access rules. So, we're going to create an access rule for the members. And we're going to say, so if you're in the role of members, you're allowed into that folder and its contents. I'll explain it a bit more in a minute. So we've got the members folder here, that's the directory you're allowed into. If your role is member, then you are allowed into that folder and the contents of that folder over here. So if you're an anonymous user, obviously you're not allowed into the members folder. So press OK. Create another access rule. All users, I'll deny that too. Manage access rules. And this is where you can see them. Now, you can't delete that one because that one's the standard. But we've overridden that by saying deny all users. Deny anonymous users. And then just allow members. Done. Okay. Close that window. Now we can test to see if we can get into the members page without logging in. So what we do, get our cursor, right click on the members.aspx page and click view in browser. There you go. Redirect straight to the login page because it recognizes that you are not logged in. If I try to sign in now, so member1, password member1, asterisk, login members page. Close this down. And there you have it. That's pretty much the first tutorial I'm going to run through. So what we've learnt is how to create a new website, how to create a default page, which is the home screen, which shows you the members page, the hyperlink to the members page. We've also got a login page, which gives you error messages, a welcome view, and the login view, and also shows you the login status, and the members page. From here, you can add more content, but this is basically to show authentication in Visual Studio, how to create the new website, and how to gain access to finding out where a lot of people have trouble, the ASP.NET config, which shows you how to set up access rules, set up roles, and set up new users. Thanks for watching this tutorial.